what is a small company that could launch as a capital for us? Well, you know, so a lot of our, the first investment that we made, a lot of that went, um, unfortunately, uh, to paying for worldwide SMS. So the problem with SMS, I mean, SMS is actually absolutely critical to Twitter um, because it means that anybody who's got any phone anywhere in the world can post a message to Twitter. Um, but it costs money to uh, outside the United States to send SMS messages on carriers' networks. So we were paying fairly hefty sums of money um, in that first year that we were an investor uh, to SMS fees. And eventually we decided to turn off SMS in large parts of the world and we're turning it back on now, country by country. Um, so there was, you know, certainly some millions of dollars that were spent on that. Um, uh, you know, the, the service costs a lot of money to host and uh, uh, bandwidth costs. Um, and so certainly some millions of dollars. But the other thing that I would say is that we have raised, I mean, I don't know if this data is in Crunchbase or some other place on the web, but we have now raised uh, somewhere around $50 million. And you know we've got at least 80% of that in the bank. So the biggest reason to uh, raise all this money was that we could at really good valuations. Um, and uh, it serves as a war chest, uh, I think, uh, and quite valuable um, to assure um, people that we're going to be around, uh, and that, uh, and to keep, to some extent, um, the employees comfortable um, that we're going to be around, and to um, make new employees comfortable and to make business partners comfortable. So, um, you know, when a company gets to the scale that Twitter's at, uh, and you have the opportunity to, you know, raise a, a large round of financing, to some extent it's about insurance uh, and uh, uh, the ability to stay independent and, and commit the company to a course that could be a three to four year effort to um, build multiple revenue streams, um, scale those revenue streams, get profitable, and do all that. All that could, could take some money. And now we have it. So I'm curious, you probably more than any other person in the DC community you sort of live your life on the web and you're blogging and Twittering. And, um, um, I'm kind of curious how you envision that as part of the strategy and, you know, do you ever get to a point where you're like, I'm just spending too much time blogging, I need to get back to one of companies, or how do you kind of evaluate strategically investing your time in that? I'm not particularly good at managing my time, uh, and so I, I am absolutely certain that I, I, do not, I do not manage my time efficiently, and, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's just this book that Four hour work week, what, what, is that, was that what it's called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where, what? That's it. And you know, there's this notion that you could actually get done in four hours, you know, what you need to get done. And, you know, I, first of all, I don't believe it. Um, and second of all, I, I don't think I can practice it because I, um, I try to be, I guess, generous with my time uh, because I really believe that, you know, it's going to get paid back. Um, and uh, so, but I do try to compartmentalize my time. So I try not to blog um, after seven in the morning. Uh, I try not to Twitter more than three or four times a day. Um, and, uh, and I try to do email no more than once or twice a day. So, uh, so I'm um, actively trying to compartmentalize certain time sums that are out there for me, and then uh, you know I have a very you know, active calendar um, that I have an assistant who helps me manage. So, you know, 
from somewhere between 8 in the morning and 6 at night, I'm pretty booked back to back all day long. Uh, and I can't do anything other than um, you know, do those meetings and, and uh, um, go see people, or whatever it is that I'm scheduled to do. So, um, uh, the, so the, the social media stuff, uh, I've tried to put you know, a, uh, a bucket of time and, 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 and manage it to, to that time. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, and, well, and then the other thing is, do you do, I guess, uh, is it a strategic asset to you to Square Ventures and do you kind of uh, position the firm that way to help you? I've got this no, so, else so in 2003, I started blogging in, in September 2003. And, and that was also the time when we started Union Square Ventures. And um, we basically kept the blog a secret. Uh, from investors when we raised our first fund. Uh, there were a few investors who picked up on it, but I, I think most of the people who invested in our fund did not realize that I was actively blogging about venture capital business. I thought it would be controversial, and I didn't think um, it was going to help us raise the fund. And, um, and I wasn't even sure. I, I, I was, honestly, in 2003, 2004, I was blogging more out of curiosity than anything else. Um, and it didn't really occur to me that this was going to become a strategic um, asset you know, for doing what we do until probably um, early part of 2005. And, um, and so it, it now, I think, is, is very clear strategic asset and uh, and I I do think about it in that way uh, and, and there is a certain amount of uh, um, strategy that goes into the way that, that I use my blog um, but 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 honestly a lot of it is also in, instinct and, and experimentation and you know, trying stuff and seeing what works and what doesn't. But I, I definitely think it's made a, a, a huge difference um, in our deal flow and uh, our ability to um, quickly get a read on something that you need. And, uh, and it's also created opportunities that I don't think we would have had if I 